What's going on guys? Welcome back to LOI Fan TV. I'm joined once again by Luke to look ahead to the first round of the FEI Cup and wow, it is Derby's galore. We've got a couple of cracking games to look into. Um, Luke, I, I think we might start off with Wilton United and Cargilline United. What do you think? Why the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few uh, like a <laughs> highlight of four, four games for this video because there is like a lot of games like that where like we'd be doing a, a disservice to kind of to kind of speak on them because we, we just don't really know um, to be fair but like for a first round of, of an FEI Cup like with all these teams still in it does it like the, the draw seems rigged there's a couple of absolute cracking games isn't there this weekend yeah you couldn't ride it could you like uh, yeah like the, the loud derby and obviously the Dublin derby and then uh, yeah like just, just as I said for a first round FEI Cup um, tie draw like they've it's bang on the money. Yeah, yeah. Wish they kind of save some of those games for later on in the competition, but sure, look. I'm oh, not now. complaining from Michelle's point of view. I'm absolutely not complaining to be fair. But uh, we will start off with your boys. Obviously, um, been a mad week so far. Obviously, traveled to the Daily Mount on Friday, but maybe just to, to touch on uh Tuesday night quickly. Um, how, how was that? I aged twenty years. I thought the first <laughs> leg aged me. The second leg, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Fantastic result. And uh, yeah, just well, like the game at everything, you thought you thought we were ho home and dry. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Jack Fringer sent off, they score, and there's a penno. And you're like, oh, if this goes to extra time, we're done. Yeah. And then yeah, just he misses it and we're true. Like, so yeah, such a such a huge relief, not just for a competition point of view, but from a financial point of view. And now 1.7 million is guaranteed. And the Sinclair Armstrong transfer. Wow. give you 700 grand as well so like that's basically us now like we're we're, we're we're okay for this year which is great um so yeah like as i said i think we're going to take the momentum of that into friday's match against bows who to be fair have like have signed well like dawson the boy ross tierney um like uh, lee cabin or like they've they've a few little additions too so yeah it'd be, it's an interesting game it, it'd be interesting to see what sort of teams line up or our or, or manager go play their strongest 11 or will it be a bit of a rotation yeah, I was on. I was wondering because obviously you have on, you have a quick turnaround again on Tuesday night with uh with Prague coming to town as well. So like it's kind of like would you need like uh, Prague? It's gonna take a, a little bit of a miracle for for Rovers to get through that. Yeah. Um, in all seriousness, so it's like nearly like would you almost kind of prioritize the Bows game over over the Tuesday night game? Like it's 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 a it's a big call. Obviously, the players will be tired from 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 that game on on Tuesday as well. Um, do you expect kind of a rotated enough team for the, for both on Friday? Yeah, I'd say I'd say so because like we haven't been to a cup final twice since since we won our first league. Like yeah, and like it's it's just been a letdown. And I think this year Bradley even pinpointed after the game when he was getting asked by Prague, he's like, no, like in all serious, it's like we want to get back to the Aviva. So I think we will play a strong team. Now to be fair. Like Bradley was even saying, there there is players that he didn't risk on Tuesday that he's saving for Friday. So like the likes of like Makinev, um, potentially Burke, uh, Lee Grace came off the bench, and then Jack Byrne is suspended for the second uh, for the Friday game, so he'll play. Darren yeah. Nugent, who got sent off in the first leg, he didn't play on Tuesday, so he'll play. So like there, there there's there's five or six fresh faces to come back into the fall, like Richie Tell, Sean Calvert didn't come off the bench. So yeah, I think it'll be rotated enough, but by no means it won't be a weak side. It'll be still we'll have enough for both. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, Bo was at home here, and they've had a quite a poor season. In all fairness, obviously, they're, they're off the back of that two 0 defeat against Sligo. Obviously, comical uh goal to concede in the last minute, and they just seem to be a bit of a disaster at the moment. And obviously, signing Ross Tierney and Dawson the boy is, is is obviously fantastic business, but it kind of shows you like how limited their kind of scouting department is. That they're they signed even Danny Grant recently enough as well. Like they're just signing all their kind of experts. Well failed abroad not failed yeah. but like haven't made cut the cut the mustard abroad and yeah. bring it back it's not like the most extensive scouting network in, in the world is it it's around really badly like even looking at shells compared like bows have way higher revenue streams than shells and like these signings prove that they do because they just have to go on and like sign and rust uh rust and dawson boy who have like a year and a half left in their deal so like they like they what? want the big wages. So, like, what, like, it's just what, why are you waiting until you're eight in the league to sign these players? Why not do it in January? You know what I mean? So, yeah. it, it's just, it's such a, it's such a stress. Like, Femin has a lot of questions to answer, to be honest. Uh, the whole, this, this, his whole director of football reign there has been a uh, lackluster to say the least. So, uh, yeah, 
Anyway, so like I'd say, as I said, Devoy and Tierney are great players, so I think they will make a difference. Suppose you know. Yeah, I think just on Devoy, I think I think he's absolutely mad because I I I rate him. I think he's I think he's a good player. He obviously, I think that the MK Dons initially made it like a lot of mm. appearances in League One. They did get relegated. I think he um got loaned to Swindon in League Two. Made a good few appearances last season. He could have done a lot better than Bowes. I know there is an emotional attachment to the club, um, mm. but this feels like a real backward step in his career for me. To be honest, like it feels like a strange one. Even even if you're going to come back to Ireland, go to it, go to a Rovers, go to a Pats or something. And um, I know obviously there's there is that emotional connection and and kind of the Judas comments and things like that. But this even got to Scotland or something. This this feels like a real backward step with the way Bowes are at the moment. So like it, it's baffling, like like even like some Robert fans are like, what the hell? We let him go to Bowls for we should he should yeah. we should have signed him. Like it was just yeah, and like a long term deal it, it by the looks of it as well. Like and he's such a young player, 23, 24 Like he's yeah, it, I think, yeah, I saw that on the on the article. Yeah, twenty two. So like it's yeah, weird. it's it's it, anyways. Look, you never know what goes on behind the scenes. Is he homesick or what? <laughs> what whatever. But sure, a great addition for Bowles and yeah, I'd fancy. I'd I'd say on Friday we're going to see a lot of these new players come into the fray. Like I've been size of all three. Players that they've signed, and obviously they've they've signed like a Scottish right back. Um, he's got and, like this, yeah, they've got a few fans. So like, look, Bowser, it's, it's it's another day, is another day of Bowie's, isn't it? Like, just a lot of unknown quantities amongst yeah. the the players that they've already played for them. So yeah, um, in this game, I don't know, like, I I think I think like we won essentially three on the bounce. Like we had the draw, like three good results. Should I say we beat the Dundalk, drew away in Iceland, got and grinded up the win on Tuesday. Like I think. I think we have that resilience back now. We're on um, the FEI Cup. Like we're we're not going to underestimate that either. Like we want to win that competition. So yeah, I I think we'll be very serious here, and I I think it'll be tough, but I think we'll win the game. I'm going to go to own Rovers. Nice, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I agree as well. Yeah, I think I think Rovers will be too strong, even with it with a kind of a, a half rotated squad or whatever it ends up being. I do think I do think you're, you're too strong for them. I think the way Bowls are at the moment, they, they are a mess. Um, yeah, I'll go for two nil, two nil Rovers. Um. Not comfortable. It won't be won't be an easy game, but Bowes is quite blunt, and they need need these signings to really hit the ground running. Um, potential candidates for relegation. We'll see in the next few weeks pan out for them. Um, slipped into that ninth position. Um, the team that are trying to catch them in, in ninth is Dundalk. They of course travel to Drogheda United. Um, obviously this one was a a feisty affair last week to say the least. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a cracking game in terms of the football. It was a fantastic four two win for Dundalk at Oriel Park, but the scenes at the end weren't good really. No, it's there's no place for it really in the league, you know. Um, and it's, it's, it seems to be a bit of a reoccurring story this season, not just from a Dundalk perspective, but like across the league, like you have these incidents that just happen. Yeah, it's uh, that was the worst by a mile, though, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty bad. Like, it's like where do you even start with it? Um, yeah, just yeah, I, I just need to put the foot down, like, you need to put the foot down in general. And just like, we want to move forward as a league, we can't have any of that sort of stuff happen. So, um, yeah, like, like this is a this, this. <laughs> A loud derby now. We'll see what happens on Friday. You know, like uh, couldn't ride it straight off the bat. Like the next game, <laughs> feisty the affairs, yeah. very feisty affairs. Um, to be honest, I like, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a shock result here, like because Dundalk, as you said, are on the like the coattails of of Bows and you know, a bit of momentum, and like they can't go down. They're, like they, they, I think draw the like the lowest budget can end the league. Like they're half expected to go down, but Dundalk, like the. You, you just don't, you, they'd be one of those, it'd be like a bray to go down and you wouldn't see them again for a few years. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I think John Daly's kind of riding the momentum of the league, and I, I, I think the league's his priority. So it wouldn't surprise you if Drada, you know, were like, you know what, like, let's just go on a bit of a cup run, yeah. <laughs> home advantage. It wouldn't surprise me. And but then again, these games are always like, you know, they, they're always one goal either way. Like, you can, I'm gonna, what am I gonna say? I'm gonna say this is it has a few goals now. I'm gonna go with three two on uh, Drada. Pretty draw that huge, yeah. yeah. Edmund, obviously, yeah. they are making it making a crack of it to stay up. I think they've made eight signings now so far in this window, which is kind of shows the uh, how bad the squad was, I guess, or how yeah. kind of yeah unbalanced it was at the start of the season and, and how much work John Daly has had to try and do. And do like some of the signings, Aid Durbin, the most, the most recent one coming in. He's he's kind of a solid player that that go away. Sure. Um obviously it was just shells before that as well. So he's a solid um midfielder in the league and I think he could be kind of good for what they need at the moment. I think he's a good good option to have. And yeah, I think I think um this is a tough one because it's kind of hard to know how how both teams will approach it. We'll draw the obviously they're still gonna want to try and, and claw their way back into contention. They have been unfortunate in a lot of games this season as well, but it does look like it's kind of getting a little bit 
for too far out of reach for them at, a little bit at this stage. So maybe you're right in terms of that cup run, but I just think, yeah, I think Dundalk might start that little bit of momentum behind them um, and have enough here. I think I'll be a little, little bit tighter than last week. Um, I'll go for 2-1 Dundalk, but yeah, that one could be abandoned. It could go anywhere. Probably <laughs> 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 best love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything could happen. Um. But it uh, one to definitely keep an eye on. Um, and I said it'd be yeah. a heavy, heavy guardy presence, uh, no doubt. Um, yeah. another blockbuster clash. I believe this is on Sunday, uh, due to Derry City playing in the Europa League on Thursday evening. Um, it is Derry City at home to St Patrick's Athletic. Obviously, it'd be a tight turnaround for Derry, um, as they attempt to claw back, um, into the it's the same European football. They they have a big task on their hands tonight when this video comes out, um to, to stay to stay in in Europe. So, um, how much of a toll that will take on them to buy about extra time they have all sorts on. So, be interesting to see how that affects them. Um, obviously Pats as well. Um, results inconsistent, not great, but feels a little bit more positive with Kenny bringing in some signings most recently. Uh, Zach Elbazetti coming back from from Sweden to get a loan in England last season. So, a couple of a couple of shrewd signings. They got the keeper in who's had a bit of a dodgy start. Um, and Yang. Um, so yeah, this is another tough one, but like it just shows you like there's a lot of the, the heavy hitters are playing each other early here. Yeah, it's gonna be um, it's kind of like if you get through this round, like you you probably have one or two nice draws. Before you meet another heavy hitter, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like as you said with Derry, like they have a monumental task uh, in their European second leg, and I wouldn't surprise you if that went the distance. And if it does go the distance, there will be a hangover from it, no doubt. Thursday to Sunday, um. Even though they're at home, like like Pats will have prepared well, and as you said, Zach Elbazet is a great sign, and like he's shown it in the league. He's played in Sweden and League One, like he's a great player. He's only still like 25, 26 so yeah, yeah. he's he's still in his youth and someone that flourished under Kenny at the twenty one setup and. Yeah, um, oh, I think I think this is going to be another surprise result. To be honest, I, I think Kenny will have pinpoint the FAI Cup for himself because the league campaign has just been a disaster. Like, and he's it's yeah. very like the Europe is nearly, you know, it's nearly an impossibility. Like for kind of how their form has been, and um, yeah. so it was surprised if Kenny was like, "Look, let's just run at this cup." And a trophy for him in his first season would be a, a fantastic representation of what he's done there. So, yeah, I I think there will be a bit of a hangover. I'm gonna lean. I'm gonna go with one nil Pats. One nil Pats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be on the right along the right lines there. Is there extra time in these games? Or I, I was wondering about that. I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not I'm not. Sure. Yeah, because I wouldn't be surprised this was this could this kind of has a draw written on over a little bit to be honest. Um, but if I had to lean one way, I probably would agree with you. Um, I think Pats will go will go hundred percent all for the cup this year. Derry have their eyes elsewhere. Title title charges. They've they've potentially got Europe on the cards again next week. Um, yeah, I, I think I think you could be right with Pats. This will be this is kind of like one of the biggest games of the season for them in terms of this is all they have to play for really at this stage. So yeah. Um, Obviously, they'll have Europe coming up in the second yep. round. Um, in terms of, in terms of the domestically, this is this is all they have. So yeah, I think I think Pat's could could make this. Um, I'll back you. I'll go one one nil. Um, Pat, I would go if I knew whether it was a replay or extra time or whatever. I'd, I'd actually probably go for the draw, but um, I'm not 100 sure. So I'll, I'll, I'll lean towards Pat's to nick it on the road. But yeah, that that's tough to call as well because it depends what what starting eleven Derry put out and, and the like. So it's hard it's hard to call. I was like, see Pat's bringing a bumper crowd up there as well due yeah. to the occasion. Like, Derry, obviously, you have a huge home game like this early. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it'll be a hangover in the stands as well. So, yeah, yeah it's just the, the climate's perfect for Pat to go up there and win the game. So, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock you in the slightest. Yeah. And I feel like they have that little bit of pedigree in the cup as well. They always seem to do well in the cups. And that, I feel like that matters a little bit in terms of the history of the club and, and how they perform in Europe. And they have players in that squad that that have played well on big occasions and cup games and stuff. So they might just have enough experience to, to get them over the line. Um, interesting, obviously, Kenny and Higgins, obviously, previously in the Irish setup as well, weren't they, together? So that's a little bit of a storyline there too. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of angles. Obviously, with the John Daly angle at Dundalk as well, like, and winning the cup with Pats. And uh, yeah, it's kind of more, the more you delve in, the more kind of angles you get at. Like, like Pats, Pats have been very successful in the FA Cup in recent years. And like, that does play a factor. Like, obviously, Barry won it two years ago, but like, uh, yeah, yeah, two, two, uh, as you said, two heavy hitters going head to head, very early doors. Yeah, yeah, and that plays perfectly into the hands of uh, of Shelburne Football Club. So it seems, and um, they'll be swapping the the beaches of Gibraltar for the beaches of beaches of Bray on Sunday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have that one, Rick? Throw it down. <laughs> 
um, yeah, in terms of in terms, of, I actually haven't checked how Bray are getting on in the first division to be honest. But um, all things considered, like you you you'd, you'd take that in terms of shells looking at this draw, um, in terms of all the other teams who they who they've got shit, Rovers could be going to war on Friday. They've had some Derry could be going to war on Sunday, like and and me, all things going well. Hopefully, we'll have a routine enough win with being able to make a couple of changes betting in maybe players that didn't play on Thursday whether it's Ali Coote making his first start or Harry Wood making his first start things like that um, it feels like it feels like a nice game to to, to progress and, and it feels like you're not going into into battle against one of the big boys uh, in the cup just yet yeah like Ray aren't in the best run of form like the last three games they lost 1-0 to Cork lost 1-0 at home to Longford and then they drew three all the way to Kerry so like they're sitting fifth kind of two points off Wexford and six like they're they're having a mediocre season by all accounts. So, uh, yeah, like obviously shells have a big game on uh Thursday, but it won't be. I don't think it'll be as um as much as draining as kind of Derry's or Rovers kind of. Hopefully not. You never you know, know. You never know, of course. But like he's are going over there with an advantage, and he's are kind of well versed, obviously, with the Derry upset. You know what he's are getting into, and, and like Damien Duff, kind of that's his bread and butter, isn't it? Like just uh kind of like k- keeping your feet on the ground. So as I said, I feel like. I feel, I feel like post Thursday, the shells won't be in the worst of places. So yeah, as I said, Sunday going down to Bray, like there's worst ties to get. You would you would have snapped uh their hand off if they gave if you offered that, that draw before the draw yeah. was made. So not yeah, a terrible trip, right? It's not bad traveling, right? It's not too not bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Only down the M fifty. Yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, you could even rotate this like and give a few like Dean Williams and so on, like a run out and uh, still be comfortable enough. Like so yeah, this is this is this is gonna be I'm very confident Jelber and will win this game convincingly. I'm probably gonna I'm gonna say three one shells. Three one shells, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um I'll go two nil shells. Um hopefully no kind of scares an early goal for Bray could put put a, a bit of a scare up us, but um yeah I'd like to think we can keep a clean sheet um maybe give I think it's um give like the likes of Healy the keeper a run out give give a couple of lads like a couple of lads that, that deserve a run in the team um and there's players in, in the squad that that aren't that studies out every game that that could play down a marker in this and it's a good opportunity to, for them to to properly make a, a case for themselves to, to get into like Harry Wood even do a start as well and players yeah. like that Ali Koo like very yeah. good players that just have been impact subs of like yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, so right. Pollock as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, exactly. Yeah, you kind of forget, like, so there's a huge, huge opportunity for a lot of lads here, mm-hmm. and and this competition for pace is, is only a good thing when you're competing on a few different fronts. So, yeah, both back in the shells, winning that one. A couple of cracking games this weekend in the FEI Cup. Let us know your predictions down in the comments below. If you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like in the video and please do subscribe if you're new. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Luke, pleasure as always, mate. Thank you, Ross. Cheers.